Imagine a time before man ruled the earth, before cities rose, before machines roared. In the shadow of mammoths and saber-toothed cats, another beast roamed, fierce, towering, a predator carved by ice and survival, the dire wolf. For centuries it was a name whispered through fossils and fantasy, a symbol of wild power long lost to time. But what if I told you that this creature, once buried in tar pits and buried deeper in legend, is clawing its way back into the modern world? Today, on the Griot Chronicles, we unearth the history of this prehistoric predator and explore the science fiction turned reality tale of how scientists are resurrecting a species thought to be extinct for over 10,000 years. From ancient bones to cutting-edge gene editing, from the La Brea tar pits to high-tech labs in Texas, the dire wolf's journey is far from over. So grab your seat, hit that subscribe button, and if you're enjoying our deep dives into the past, consider fueling our fire with a warm gesture at Buy Me A Coffee. Link in the description. The past is how we understand the future. And this story, this one will leave your jaw on the floor. Chapter 1. What were dire wolves? Long before wolves howled at the moon and before man's best friend curled beside a campfire, there walked a beast through the forests and frozen plains of ancient America, Canis Dyrus, better known as the dire wolf. But let's get one thing straight. The dire wolf was not just a big grey wolf. For decades, people thought it was simply a beefed up version of the modern wolf. But recent genetic studies shattered that illusion. In truth, the dire wolf was an entirely separate species. So genetically different that it couldn't even interbreed with today's grey wolves. Think of them more like distant cousins, raised in the same wild world but shaped by very different rules. Dire wolves lived across North and South America during the late Pleistocene Epoch, roughly 250,000 to 10,000 years ago, from the icy valleys of Alaska to the warm grasslands of what is now Argentina, they roamed, hunted and ruled as apex predators. Fossils, especially from places like the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, have given us thousands of clues about their existence. Those pits alone have yielded over 4,000 dire wolf specimens, their bones stained with the dark oil of time, locked in eternal struggle with prey and predator alike. In the food web of prehistory, dire wolves weren't scavengers lurking in the shadows. They were powerful hunters running in packs, preying on massive game like bison, horses and even young mammoths. They had to be. This was an age of monsters, saber-toothed cats, giant sloths and towering short-faced bears. And yet the dire wolf held its ground. Chapter 2. Bigger, badder and built for the Ice Age. Standing shoulder to shoulder, the dire wolf would dwarf a modern grey wolf, weighing up to 150 pounds or more, with a stockier build and a broader skull, this beast was engineered for brute strength over speed. Its jaws were legendary, bone-crushing power that could snap through thick hides and shatter bones. This gave the dire wolf a crucial edge, especially in the harsh winters of the Ice Age, when carcasses were often frozen and only the strongest could survive. But raw strength wasn't all they had. Dire wolves were social animals, believed to have hunted in coordinated packs, much like wolves do today but their prey was larger, fiercer, and more dangerous. Their survival depended on cooperation, stamina, and terrifying efficiency. Their large teeth and powerful bodies were adaptations built for a world of scarcity and struggle. Ice Age ecosystems were ruthless arenas, and the dire wolf was built to dominate them. But nature has a cruel sense of irony. When the Ice Age ended, and climates began to shift, those very strengths became weaknesses. The massive herbivores they hunted disappeared. The world warmed. And slowly, the reign of Canis Dyrus began to fade. Chapter 3. The Fall of the Dire Wolf 
Every king has its reign, and every reign comes to an end. The dire wolf was once the apex predator of its time, Ice Age royalty. But around 10,000 years ago, as the curtain closed on the Pleistocene epoch, something massive happened, an extinction event, a biological shake-up that wiped out nearly 70% of the Earth's large mammals in North America. And the dire wolf? It didn't survive the fallout. So what went wrong? Well, first, climate change. The Earth started to warm up fast. Glaciers retreated, sea levels rose, and entire ecosystems flipped the script. The cold, open grasslands that dire wolves thrived in. They shrank. Forests expanded. Prey species like mammoths, giant sloths, and ancient bison started disappearing. Either from the heat, disease, or another rising predator. Us. Early humans were spreading across the Americas at the time. And we weren't just hunting. We were strategic, coordinated, and armed with weapons. Some scientists believe humans overhunted the dire wolf's prey, and may have even competed with them directly. Then enter the grey wolf, smaller, faster, and far more adaptable. Grey wolves thrived in forests while dire wolves were built for open plains. As environments shifted, the grey wolf had the upper hand, and with less food to go around, the dire wolf was slowly pushed out. Big. Powerful, fearsome, but too specialized. The very traits that made the dire wolf a beast in the Ice Age became its downfall in a changing world. And so the howls stopped. Bones were buried in tar and time. The dire wolf became a ghost, a legend whispered in fossils. But little did we know that ghost was only sleeping. You ever heard of the La Brea tar pits? Picture this. Sticky, bubbling asphalt right in the middle of what's now Los Angeles. And for tens of thousands of years, it acted like nature's glue trap. Creatures, from mammoths to saber-toothed cats, wandered in, got stuck and became fossilized for eternity. But among the most frequently found bones in those pits, the dire wolf. Yeah. Over 4,000 dire wolf specimens have been pulled from that black ooze more than any other large predator. It's like the tar pits had an open invitation just for them. From those bones, scientists began piecing together the puzzle of what these beasts were. Large, heavy-jawed, pack-hunting predators that once ruled Ice Age America. But for the longest time, most researchers figured they were just beefed-up versions of grey wolves. Bigger, meaner, scarier. End of story, right? Wrong. In 2021, something wild happened. Scientists cracked open ancient DNA from dire wolf bones, and the results flipped everything we thought we knew. The dire wolf, it turns out, isn't a cousin of the grey wolf. They're more like distant strangers. In fact, they're so genetically different, they're not even in the same genus. While grey wolves are Canis lupus, dire wolves got slapped with a new tag Inosian dirus, meaning terrible wolf. So, no, they weren't just XXXL grey wolves, they were their own unique ancient predators. Now that's a plot twist. Now let's fast forward from Ice Age tar pits to sleek, high-tech labs in the 21st century. Enter Colossal Biosciences, a biotech company that's straight up trying to resurrect extinct animals. Their slogan might as well be Jurassic Park, but for real. These folks aren't just bringing back the woolly mammoth. They've set their sights on the dire wolf. So how exactly do you bring back an animal that's been extinct for over 10,000 years? It starts with ancient DNA. Remember that ear bone from Idaho or that ancient tooth found in Ohio? Scientists sequenced DNA from those fossils and compared it to modern wolves, identifying key differences in genes related to size, muscle structure, skull shape and coat colour. Then came the gene editing. Using CRISPR, they edited these ancient traits into the genome of modern grey wolves. It's like genetic time travel, rewriting the code of life itself. Once the changes were made, they implanted embryos into surrogate dogs. And what came out? Three pups, Romulus, Remus and Khaleesi. 
Born in late 2024 and early 2025, these aren't exact clones, but they're pretty damn close. With white coats, massive jaws and bigger builds, they resemble dire wolves more than any living creature has in thousands of years. But here's the thing, not everyone's cheering. Critics argue these pups are just genetically modified wolves, not true dire wolves. Some say it's science overstepping its bounds. Others worry about the ecological risks. What happens if they escape the lab? What happens if we try to bring more extinct predators back? Still, Colossal says this is about conservation and learning from the past. Whether you see it as hope or hubris, one thing's for sure. The dire wolf's howl is no longer a sound of the past. The truth is, we can't actually clone a dire wolf. Its DNA is too fragmented. What Colossal Biosciences did was create something new, inspired by the old. A genetic tribute, not a resurrection. That sparked some serious ethical questions. Is this really de-extinction, or is it just playing God? Critics argue these wolves don't belong to any ecosystem. Releasing them into the wild could cause ecological chaos, especially in a world already struggling to balance human activity with wildlife conservation. Others raise moral concerns. Should we be bringing back extinct creatures at all? Or should we focus on saving the ones still here? Supporters, though, see hope. A chance to use cutting-edge science to learn, preserve, and maybe one day reverse some of humanity's damage. Either way, one thing is clear. The dire wolf is no longer just a fossil in a museum. It's back in the conversation, back in the headlines, and maybe, one day, back in the wild. So could it happen? Could dire wolves, or something eerily close, one day roam the forests, plains, or tundras again. With the birth of Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi, we've already taken the first step. And while they live in carefully controlled environments now, the questions are growing louder. What if they were released? What if entire packs were bred? Could they adapt? Could we handle the consequences? The idea isn't just science fiction anymore. It's real. And it opens doors far beyond dire wolves. We're talking mammoths in Siberia, dodos in Mauritius, and possibly even ecosystems rebuilt with species long erased by climate and conquest. For scientists, it's about rebalancing nature, reviving lost biodiversity, and maybe even fighting climate change by restoring extinct species that once shaped ecosystems. But here's the thing. Every action we take ripples outward. Tinkering with life, resurrecting ancient beasts, doesn't just bring back the past, it reshapes the future. Are we prepared? Scene 7, A Crossroads. The dire wolf once lived as a legend, a ghost of the Ice Age buried in tar and time, and now it's back, sort of. Whether you see this as myth reborn, a triumph of human innovation, or science gone too far, one thing's for sure, we're at a crossroads. We now have the power to rewrite extinction, to breathe life into bones, to paint old stories with new DNA. But with that power comes responsibility. Because once you open the door to resurrection, you have to ask yourself, are we honoring nature or rewriting it in our image? The dire wolf's howl may echo once more, but the question remains, should it? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.